I'm on a hill. You're on a hill? Mm-hmm. Well, can you describe that a little more? See if you could see your feet. Black boots. Back in 1980, Dr. Brian Weiss was using hypnotherapy with a patient named Catherine to discover the roots of her paralyzing phobias. In his book, Many Lives, Many Masters, he writes that during one of their sessions, Catherine regressed back to a time before she was born, recounting a past life as an 18-year-old girl named Aranda from the year 1863 BC. Sounds crazy, I know. So, okay. You are a Yale-trained, Columbia-trained doctor, psychiatrist, agnostic, and this woman is saying these things, things are coming out of her mouth that, that are literally unbelievable. Despite his skepticism, Dr. Weiss started to notice a connection between Catherine's paralyzing phobias and the traumas she says she suffered in her past lives. Remember her fear of water? Well, in one of her past lifetimes, she remembered drowning in a tidal wave. Could that explain her phobia? And that was even weirder to me as a formerly trained psychiatrist that how does imagination or fantasy cure symptoms that had been there since she was a little girl? It doesn't. So there had to be something deeper. And that was the beginning for me, but it still took that other stuff for me to So change. what was the moment that you were convinced that what she was saying was real and that this was something bigger than you had expected? It was about the fourth or fifth time, and she died in one of these lifetimes in the past, floated above, replicating all of the near-death experience work. She had never heard of that or read anything. And then... Had you? I had. I had read... Heard of NDEs? Yes. I had read uh, Raymond Moody's Raymond book Moody. from the 70s, yeah. And so, Life After Life. Yes. Raymond Moody is a psychologist, author, and researcher who coined the term near-death experience in the late 70s. By interviewing people who had NDEs, he found they'd experienced many of the same things, like floating above their bodies, watching the scene below, meeting friends and relatives who'd previously passed, traveling through a long tunnel, feeling no pain and a sense of peace. So I was aware of that, but in a clinical academic sense, because I. I didn't really experience that myself. I didn't know if I believed it, mm -hmm. but I, I knew about his work. Mm -hmm. And I remember my office feeling very cold, icy cold at this moment. She said, there are two people here to see you, your father and your son. Now she's in this hypnotized state. She's in between lifetimes now, just floating there, but still in a deep state. And she didn't know anything about me. I don't even have diplomas hanging in my office. So she's telling me, your father's here and your son. So she doesn't know that your father is passed or no, not passed. No. And this was before you could Google your doctor. It was before the internet. It was, <laughs> yes, <laughs> before you could Google your doctor. Yes. Before all this, uh, she didn't know anything about my father. She tells me um, my daughter is named after him. Amy was. She's here now. And mm -hmm. she was named after him. His English name was Alvin. His Hebrew name was Avram. She didn't know this. She's a Catholic woman from New England. He had, she said, your father um, is here. He died from his heart. His heart was important. Your daughter is named after him. And she went into other medical details. He died in New Jersey a year and a half before I began with Catherine, um, just before Amy was born. Amy was named after him. And Catherine's telling me this, the room still feeling icy cold. And I'm thinking, what is this? How does she know this? Because he never had an obituary. There's, it's not only before the internet. There's no place to look it up. There's no obituary. It's not written down. Our best friends didn't know these details. And then she said, your son is with him. He's here too. He's very tiny, shining brightly. And his heart is important also because it's turned around backwards. And she went into why he died. Medical details. That was the son, my first child, who died in 1971. This is happening around 1981. This was the son who had lived 23 days. Yes, she's telling me about him and the very rare congenital heart deformity. She's describing it and giving me other details. And that was the epiphany for me. That was the moment I knew. And you can start eating your food now. You can easily eat your food. Come on, take the food from the plate and slowly start eating it. Yes, 
Yes, yes. Now you can eat easily. Your hand is easily reaching to your lips. Yes, that's it. Fantastic. You are doing it so easily. You can do it so easily. Again, you can take the food from the plate. Yes. And slowly you can ease, easily eat just like any other person. Absolutely correct. Your hands are so free now. Now you can eat your food for life long. You can move your hands exactly perfect. And you are doing it now just like any other person. Fantastic. I'm on a hill. You're on a hill? Mm-hmm. Can you describe that hill for me? Feet and see if you could see your feet. Black boots. Are you not one tree, not one plant. All of it is God. All of it is God in its full expression. And how does a rock evolve, for example? The rock is the physical form. A rock has consciousness. The consciousness comes and goes. Mm. It's never without consciousness. It's just the consciousness of it. For instance, you, your soul, wants to experience yourself as a rock. You come in and take form as a rock that has always been there and the consciousness that was within that rock now moves on to become something else, experience something else. This is done simultaneously. It's not linearly like you believe it to be so there's not a soul trapped in a rock for a few million years they're multi-dimensional beings such as you you're having multi-dimensional experiences one of them being a rock mm. so your feeling of spirituality is all a matter of your level of awareness I see okay so you're actually communicating with the uh, consciousness in all that is everywhere around you yes okay and since all of it is God you're really communicating with the same energy are you not that's correct okay that's, thank you you will understand who you are the more and more you put effort into finding who you are it's not outside of you it's not anywhere other than with you always inside this wisdom of you the whole universe is within you because you are the universe you are God God is all means that you are part of every planet every speck of dust in this thing you call space every star every cosmic experience everything every person every animal every drop of water is you and it exists within you all of that wisdom is there for you what's the soul to me the soul is the essential nature of all of us it's the the deeper mind it's a part of us that goes on, that never dies, that comes into physical form and goes out of physical form. But it's, it's not complex. That's our real nature. Yeah. Did you believe in souls before you met Catherine? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. when, when I say agnostic, it was like, I, I don't know that I believe in God even at this. I, I'm aware of it, and it could be. I'm just not sure. Mm -hmm. I, I need more proof, more evidence. And I got that. Mm -hmm. So now how do you define God? Uh, to me, God is indescribable. We don't have words and concepts, but it's in part understanding the energy that connects all of us together.
it's a clue into the nature of God. One of the first comments that Catherine made was, um, they tell me, the masters, they tell me there are many gods, for God is in each of us. That tells me that God is in each atom and subatomic particle of our being. That's our essence. We're distilled from that. Mm. But we can't describe it because it has qualities that we don't even have words for. This is like beyond the dog whistle. You have to have the, this entire spectrum. But it's beyond the highest energy that we can imagine. But it possesses God. Compassion, incredible compassion, omniscience, wisdom, love, all of those qualities and more. That's a long answer. I love it, though. Mm. Do you pray? I do. I do. I pray. I meditate. Because I know that these are, um, how to put it, connections that we make with the divine. The concept of grace, that mm -hmm. we can have interventions that help us. So I pray, of course, because I know, I know beings are listening and we need to have faith in those beings. Whatever we want to call them, whatever names, it's beyond names. Okay, this is the question for you. <laughs> What do you think happens when we die? Oh, well, I think that we never die because we're never really born. We existed before. You existed before this birth. You were probably a spiritual guide to your mother or someone else. You were on the other side. Then you come into a physical body as a baby and you go through a life. And the next stage, though, is leaving the body. So if you are the soul, you never die. When the body dies, you go on. Thank you so much. Oh. Thank you.